Greetings and welcome to what is Monster Hunter Online. Short answer, it is an online Monster Hunter game. Long answer is that it is a, definitely a Monster Hunter game online, semi-MMO-ish, that was only released in China. That would explain why everything is in Chinese. Now, because of that, you do have to jump through several hoops in order to get it installed and play. Not the least, which is create a QQ account, which from what I've basically gather it is some type of either Facebook slash YouTube account or service that's over there, but that is the main thing you need in order to play the game. Now the link to how to jump through all those hoops will be down in the description below this video. It is the guide that I used in order to get everything set up. Don't get discouraged if you do get confused, it does work. Now the most important part is that once you're done with that process, you're going to be given a account number, not an actual account name. You need to save that number for if for whatever reason you lose or you uncheck the remember my account name box at the login screen in the launch of the game. Now, with that out of the way, there is an English patch. Now, it's, it is not official, it's unofficial obviously. It is done by a small team of I don't know how many people. The only problem is that every time a new patch gets applied to the game, then that instantly undoes everything that they translated because before the latest patch, I could see the general information of what the quest required me to do. I couldn't see what my items did and I could see all the materials that I have gathered. Now, because the newest patch came out, it undid everything they did, and they are still going over their data, making sure that their patch does not crash or cause any trouble in any way. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, how does the game work? Well, you, if you kept online, well, reading online how the game works, you might have read around that you are limited to how much you can hunt per day or per week, and that, for a free-to-play player, is definitely true. If we follow my cursor down here, you will see these. These are your hunting tickets. Now, as far as I have seen, you can get a total of 30 of these per week, I think. I'm not sure. Now, you are kept at 30, but I know that there are several ways to get more. And I think you can get a certain amount per day. And if you subscribe to their VIP service that I have no idea what would benefit you in that way, you can get probably more. Now, hold on, as you can see right there, it says max something about 30, and it says something about 20 out of 20. That means you can probably get 20 a week or something? I was for the 30 a week? I am not really sure. But anyway, you need these to enter hunts. And now, there is an option to go into a hunt by paying uh, silver, which we have... Uh, where is our silver? Oh, right here. Now, the downside is that that is only useful if you're helping somebody else out and you have no need of any monster parts. Because if you go in by paying silver, you do not get any materials at all. So, there's that. Now, aside from that, there are a whole bunch of other currencies in the game. Let's see if I can find them to show them to you. Here they are. So, these are our hunting tickets. Uh, these are farm coins. We do have a little farm. This is definitely useful in this game because it's a better way... This stops you from wasting your tickets when you need something like certain bugs or honey or anything. Because you do get to do it inside your own little private farm like in World of Warcraft Wireless of Draenor. Ish. Then we have our Silver Zenny and everything else I have absolutely no idea what they are. <laughs> if I'm totally honest. I know there's one for unlocking certain weapon talents but I can get to that in a second. So, just like with any other monster game, you're going to be following around a storyline that will unlock certain monsters to hunt that you will then be able to go on your own and hunt around. Now, because this is online, adding people or adding friends to your party is so much easier. This is the general party finder window from what I believe. As you can see, people are looking for something. And, but this step right here, this is your friends. And I have no idea what these labels are, but this is my friend that also joined up a little bit a while ago. So if I ever, if he was online, I could just right click and I believe the third one is add to party. And just like that, you're already set to join up, join up a hunt as a party. Now, the only downside is that your friend needs to have, have advanced through the story enough so that you can actually join on the same hunt. Makes a little, makes sense, doesn't it? So how do, well, how does the story work and everything else? Well, there, this girl right over here, this is Lily, I believe that's her name that was given to her in the unofficial English patch. She is the main uh, story follower, uh, the way made to unlock story missions. You follow her around along with her friend, then we unlock this guy, who I have as apparently the hunting guild master or some sort. Then there's this guy right here, he is the forger, he creates your armor and weapons and upgrades them. This guy, I don't remember, this is their general vendor, he sells all sorts of stuff. 
this is the uh, types of ammo for the bow gun. This is general items, and the third option is bow coatings. Now, what do you sell? Nothing is the question, apparently. Anyway, so then there's this girl right here who gives you some type of weekly quest to do certain things. And then over here, by the way, this is the absolutely starting area. I have not accessed the finish, uh, the, well, the end game town per se. And then you exit over through this uh, little doorway over here. And this takes us to exactly what you're looking at right there. This is the, what you would call the main town or the main starter town. As you can see, it is relatively big. She is apparently someone important in this village. I have no idea what it is. Now we have another general vendor and yet another vendor. What did you sell? You're something special, aren't you? Uh, yeah, she sells special things that I still have no idea what they are. Then we have the... She she sells some type of items for some certain type of very special coin that I'm not sure what. Some type of very special pass. And she sells cosmetic items from what I believe. Then there's this girl who I believe is the... What you would call the G-Rank quests eventually. As you can see by the notice board. And she handles the events. If I click on her, you will see... And click over here. These are the tickets you can get from certain events. Then over here is the Palico Lady. She is the one that you can buy Palicos from and sort of all that sort of stuff. Uh, I believe this guy right here is actually the first cat you start off with. She leaves and decides to become some type of cat trainer or something. Then there's this old man that has some type of daily quest that you can finish up. And in there is your uh, private little farm that I'll show you in a little bit. Moving around and moving along here. Up there is the restaurant, just like with any other Monster Hunter game, you need a Palico food tickets or food vouchers in order to eat. You do get quite a bit of them from random quests and from daily uh, roulettes. So if I go over here, this is these are your daily rewards. You get a little something and then for doing some, I have no idea what here, you get more rewards. So you're always getting a little bit of something from the game. So if you go to our inventory and open up the little treasure bag we got, what did we get? We got a trap, and I believe that is a demon potion. I think that was called. But it increases your attack, and here we got some extra tickets and some potions and food. But anyway, yes, the food is there. However, you all do need to unlock certain food items, as always. If we sit down to eat, you will see that I have very limited amount of food here. I've only got three of them. How do I unlock more? I honestly don't know. But that is currently not important because the monsters have not been particularly hard. This is the mail guy. If you do not have a VIP account and you receive mail from somebody, you need to talk to him to receive it. This guy right here is the, um, well, your chess keeper. There is also another guy in the other area, exactly like him. You need to talk to him, not the chest, in order to open your vault. And this shows you everything. This is general items and these are your materials. You are a little limited, however, you can keep expanding it by buying these things. I did get quite a bit of them. I do not remember where. But that is how that works, just as always. Here's the forger guy again. This cat right here, he forges the Palico gear. So if you talk to him, you'll see that we can buy but from, from him. These are materials to make the Palico gear. Then if we talk to him again, here we have to forge the items. So as always, there is weapons, head, and torso, just like always. And this little lady right here, she is the weapon... Uh, Improver or forger or something along the line. So if I put my weapon there You can see that I need this in order to upgrade it in some way. I am not sure how I do not want to risk it yet Besides my weapons are still pretty low grade. So most of that is exactly how you would expect and exactly as you would expect the There is by absolutely most basic of gear. Then there is um, Forge Yep, this is the forge weapons then if we talk to the third option, there is Improve Weapons and Armor. As you can see, this is how you get new weapons based on all that. I'm still missing whatever this is in order to keep upgrading it. And the last option is... I have no idea. It appears to be the same thing, but I'm not sure. Because it's not in English, I really can't help you there. So anyway, now that the introductions of the general area are out of the way, let's show you how... Oh no. Actually, we're not done yet. I need to show you the little micro farm thing since we're already here. Now, if you've played Warlords of Draenor, you know that this can pretty much remove you from the game and make it so that you just stand there spamming the looking for a group queue. Luckily, this actually serves a purpose, as I said at the beginning of the video. As you can see, here I can get fish, minerals, honey, mushrooms, and herbs. 
on a daily basis. And it's a good thing because you would hate to waste a hunting ticket to go and try and get a certain fish or herbs or anything. Now, if we talk to this, this board here, you will see that as you level up in levels, you can, once you, wait, am I level 20? Can I do this? Apparently I can do this, awesome. Okay, so as you get go raising yourself in levels, I should not be level 20 though. What level am I? I am 20, oh cool, okay, so. Let's do this, let's keep improve our farm because there's no reason not to. And just like in Water Dreadnought, you get a little mini thing that tells you it's slightly better now. But anyway, this actually serves a purpose, like I was saying, so you don't have to waste your uh, honey tickets in order to gather general resources. Ooh, that actually changed quite a bit. Fancy. So, speaking of gathering resources, it is like quite basically every other hunter Monster Hunter game. The only difference is that here you have to buy the recipes for certain... Um, for the crafting in order to make your potions, your iron skin potions, and all that other stuff. And I believe that was a vendor I just slightly skipped over that it's this... Oh no, well, we are out of farm coins, so we now need to gather more. So anyway, once you've got all that set up, you can just come over here and press in the interact button, which is default Z, and you will gather up a whole bunch of other stuff, and I believe you can do it up to three times. Let's see, that's two. Let's see, what else do we get? Let's see, this is three. Yeah, you can do it a maximum of three times per day, or if you are a VIP and you have certain tickets, you can basically speed up the process. But anyway, now that that's out of the way, we got a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, let's see, there should... Uh, eh. But forget about it anyway. So, the last guy I mentioned, which I believe sells the combining... There he goes, right there in that screenshot, right there in the middle. I believe that is the guy that sells the combination recipes. Right now, I'm still trying to figure out which one is the super potion recipe. Even though I don't really need it. There you are. It should be you. Okay, let's see. Is it this guy? Yes, this is definitely the guy. Now, unfortunately, I have no idea what each one of those are because there's no symbols there, but... This is the guy you get recipes from. I'm pretty sure that's him. And there's nothing on that tab. But anyway, now that we truly are finished with all the interactions, let me show you how hunting works in this game and pretty much how everything else, well, how exactly you expect the hunter, a monster hunter game to work. Okay, so here we are at the entrance to the monster hunting zones of the beginning area. Now, you will see this giant board right here. This is the extras board, I believe, or the bounties board. As you can see, you can get quite a bit of money, experience, and farm coins by completing these challenges, and you can only complete two a day. Now, this is this is more than just a kill this monster. This is like, I believe this one, let's see where this is. One of these for the gypsies is make it stumble or knock it down and then tumble it. So it's not as easy as just go on this. So this is how you can get a lot of money experience and farm points. Now just by approaching the exit, instead of talking to some uh, quest lady, you will unlock these zones that you can actually access. Now these right here are the story missions and they unlock the these over here that will unlock the monsters to hunt. As you can see over here, this one unlocked the gypsies, this one unlocked the Kongala. And this is the Genodrome. This is some type of new monster that I am not familiar with. It's some type of giant spider. I'm not sure. I believe this is the giant sloth bear thing. And the giant kutku and everything else is as it should be. So what are we going to hunt? Let's go hunt this, the Gypsaros. Now you will see these two right here. This is the normal mode, quote unquote. And this is the challenge mode. Now, if you've played any other Monster Hunter game, Challenge Mode will feel a lot more familiar in terms of the damage you receive, so doing it in Challenge Mode by yourself should not be a problem. Now, before we exit out the door, let me make sure I have all the ammo I need, and uh, I do not have my inventory filled up with useless stuff, just like that. So, here is the treasure guy. Well, the Let's see, put that, put that, put that away. Da, 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 da. Now, because the servers are in China, you can run into, into some lag issues. It is going to happen. Huh, what is this? Uh, item level 15, something too, all that. Very interesting, I was not expecting to get that from that. 
Let's see, I believe this is for equipment. So what is this? Uh, shift, right clicks. Huh. Oh, I think I know what it is. I think, I'm not sure. But anyway, one of the nice things about this game now is that just by opening your inventory and clicking on this tab, you can manage all of your gear in one fell soup. You no longer have to go to your chest and extract it into your inventory and then put it on. This makes things so much more friendly, honestly. But anyway, enough talking. Let's go hunt us a poisonous uh, gypsy rose. Here we are in challenge mode. Now, right here is where that I, what I was telling you about. If you want to be able to loot right there, it says that you pay with the hunting ticket, but you can loot after you feel the monster. If you play with Zenny, you cannot loot the monster or carve it in any way. So if you're just looking to help uh, one of your friends, this is definitely the way to go if you don't need any other parts. So, but we do absolutely want to carve it up, so we do that. And this right here is exactly like normal. This makes sure that everybody in your party is ready to go. But because we're alone, let's start it up and go hunting. And here we are. As you can see, the game looks very, very nice, even though I... I'm pretty sure I've only got things set up in standard, I believe? I'm not really sure. But anyway, just like with every other monster game, here's our blue chest. We're gonna take all the potions. And all the meat, because we don't need chopping stones for a bow gun. And then before we actually leave, we're gonna load up our piercing shot. The only reason I know this is piercing shot is because when the English patch was installed, I read... I... Well, that's what the name said. So anyway, now we only have three shots uh, at the time with this, but anyway. So now the gypsum should always appear relatively in the middle. Now one thing, now you can see right there, there you can see something right there. You can even see him right there in beneath, beneath the trees, right over there. Now one of the great things about it being on PC is it's no longer limited as to what it can show you. So if a monster goes to a separate area and it's literally right next door, you can actually see the monster right through the trees and everything. So that is definitely cool and definitely useful to know where it went. So anyway, we know it is somewhere around here. There it is. Now be careful with this thing. This is the poisonous swamp after all. Now we've got some boars here. Uh, we're gonna have to deal with these boars first. And then with also with these things. These things are so annoying. There we go, that thing is dead now. Okay, well, we got its attention. Now, just with, like with any other Monster Hunter game, the head is the general weak spot of every monster. Especially useful against this thing because you want to break its little shiny thing, right? Now, come on, let's see if we can't. So excuse me while I fast forward this entire battle. It is going to take me around 10 to 15 minutes to kill this thing. So I will see you after the fast forward. And there we go. A gypsy rose hunted! So as you can see in that extremely accelerated version, hunting is basically exactly as you remember it. You hunt the monster down, it run tends to run away to another area, you hunt it down to the new area, it might run away again, it might not. And as usual, everything is as you would expect. Now, unto the things that are new in this game, because there are new things. So amongst those things are what you would call weapon super attacks. And that sounds amazing, and it really is, although I have no idea how they work functioning properly. And I am about to show you how that works once we get out of the hunt. Let's see, anything worth gathering in these 60 seconds we have left? Uh, yeah, is this minerals? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Anyway. And as you would expect, as you saw right before we switched to this screen, down here was my experience bar. I gained quite a bit of experience. This is the ranking you end up with. I got 80 because I got hit by the poison during that, but whatever. And it turns out that was the shortest one I've ever hunted. And this, these are all the things we gathered. I have, I believe these are armor spheres, I believe. And I've, hmm, I have no idea what this is. This is definitely new. I don't want to press this button because I have no idea what it does, but before, 
I believe we can click on one of these and get a little extra something. Oh, this is a list of all the stuff we can get, and if we pay, we can get all of it. But we didn't, so... On to the um, most exciting aspect of the game, which is different weapons. So, now the good thing is I don't actually have to have every single weapon, because the game does a very nice job of showing you how weapons work. So, if we click, I believe it's J? And no, not J, H. So, this looks very fancy, and it probably is. This is something for the weapons. Now, as you can see, I have whatever blue is and whatever this is for the longsword, as well as for the longbow, I only have this. I have no idea what that means. But the important part is this. These are what you're seeing right there. That is the ultimate attack for the sword and shield. Every single weapon has two versions of the super attack. Now, in order to fill it up, right here, this little dragon guy around the one, whatever this is, that as you're hitting the monster and take damage, it'll start filling up in color. Once it's completely filled up, you can use your ultimate attack. Now, as you can see, the ultimate attacks obviously vary from weapon to weapon, but are, appear to be pretty powerful and definitely awesome. Some being slightly more awesome than others. For example, this one for the great sword is... Appears to be absolutely devastating, <laughs> if we're totally honest. The one for the bowgun. Now, this takes quite a bit, and unfortunately once it charges up, I cannot move or aim in another direction. So I gotta hope that I hit the, whatever it is, and from what I've seen, that places a bomb on it, and I have no idea what else it does. And if we go to the second one, we put whatever that that is in front of it. Looks like it's some sort of pike, and then we can stab something and then blow it up. Interesting. Now, these super attacks are unlocked once you reach around level 15. You do a quest in order to hunt the signature monster in this version, which is some type of... Uh, fiery scaly dragon with fiery butterflies around it but once you complete the in that quest you get unlimited uses of your special ability for one minute so you can see what it does now at the time i tried using it i put some type of bomb on its chest because i managed to hit it and wow that definitely was pretty impressive let's watch that again load up and looks like you fire some type of joint arrow anyway as you can see, every single weapon definitely seems to have some pretty awesome ones, especially the twin daggers. They obviously have the most impressive ones, being the most acrobatic weapons of them all. So yeah, now this, is, this isn't the only thing that the game... I am wondering if that one right there makes it so that all of your stuns activate at the same time. That would be awesome. But anyway, as I was saying, aside from this, in this tab that I looked over very briefly, there is something that the, uh, the translation calls Weapon Talents. Now, to the best of my a bit, oh, so you charge up whatever it is, and now that is impressive. That's pretty cool. Anyway, onto the step. As you can see, you these are what are called the weapon talents. Now, in order to unlock these, you need these. These are weapon talent tokens. Now, from what I gathered when I looked around when it was translated, these you can gather from the unstable areas. Uh, yeah, unstable areas. So if you enter an extra boy and you complete something or whatever, you will get a token. And then you can use these tokens to unlock uh, these talents. I have no idea what they do, honestly. But as you can see, you can go unlocking more as you level up. Probably. So those are the two things that this game has that other Monster Hunter games do not. Well, Monster Hunter Cross slash Generations might have ultimate abilities in one sense of the word. In the sense that it's going to have some different fighting styles. But I don't think it's going to have ultimate abilities per se. So that is the main difference. And what is another great thing is this. These are the actual weapon tutorials for every weapon. Now, as you can see, where is my bowgun? These are locked. Now, the reason these are locked is because these are slightly more advanced moves that require you to advance through the story to unlock them. So before, uh, these are your standard moves. And I believe these go unlocking as you learn the weapon talents, maybe? Or as you gain practice with your weapon, that might have something to do with this. That would definitely be interesting. So ultimate weapons, basic weapon, thingamajigs, and weapon talents. So that is the main difference and the main, you would say, uh, difference between this and other Monster Hunter games. And you can also press this little button right here and that'll open an in-game browser window. I am not sure if you guys can see this or not. Hopefully you can. And this brings you to the, I believe, uh, what was this? 
this, this is the tutorial again with slightly more detailed descriptions. And then I believe there's also a crafting uh, tree. Oh no, a combo tree. Here we go. This is the combo tree of what you can do from one place to another. So yeah. So how does... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so now that all of that is said and done, how does this game rate per se? Would you play this over another Monster Hunter game? Well, the short answer is one, it's free. It's absolutely free. You are limited a week of what you can do, but it is free, so there is no reason not to try it. Two, the graphics are definitely great. You, I'm not sure if you guys were able to appreciate it during the fight, but you saw how much de detail was on the Dipshiro, so that is pretty cool. And even on my armor here, excuse me, you can see all the detail that goes into it, so the game itself looks absolutely amazing. You can even see uh, all the strands of hair. They're not individual, but they're there. So the graphics definitely put it up top against all the other Monster Hunters, except maybe um, the G series, which only releases in Japan, which is very similar to this, except that is a buy a game you buy and then you play online, from what I've seen. So with all that said, is it worth playing? There's so yeah, it's free, no reason not to give it a shot. You might be a little put off if you have a lot of free time and you want to hunt all day long by the ticket system. But I haven't found it that particularly tough. After all, hunting alone isn't that fun for me, so I usually wait for my friends to log in so we can hunt together. I am at level 20, whoops, so yeah. But anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully you find this video useful in your decision of whether you want to play Monster Hunter online or not. Just look at those graphics, look at the waterfall, let's go look at the waterfall. Look at that water effect, very nice, very fancy. And we will see you next time.